What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and today I've got some TV talk. This is a segment on my channel I don't get to do very often, but every once in a while when I have the time and dedication, I go through Netflix, I watch a newly posted series that everyone is talking about and I try to give uh, my feedback on how good it is, whether you should watch it, stuff like that. Um, I watched a series back in January, and I'm just now getting to review it here on the uh, third day of March. Uh, my life got hectic. I'm sorry I have not been around. You guys will notice that I have not posted many videos lately. Um, but with me doing all the all the wrestling journalism over at ProWrestlingJournal.com and doing a lot of my film reviews now over at PopHorror.com, um, I my content has been going there a lot. So please check out those two places if you guys want to see wrestling or horror film reviews. Um, but I want to get back to doing some mishmash stuff on my channel until Steeler Season returns. I want to do some different things. Uh, catch you guys up on my art and what I've been working on. Talk about the XFL a little bit. Talk about some more indie film reviews and stuff like that. So let me know down below in the comments what you guys want to see from my channel going forward as I try and get back into it. And get a little better about posting more often. But today, I want to talk about a series that got released mid-January 2020 of this year. And it was, uh, it's called uh, A Killer Inside, The Mind of Aaron Hernandez. Now, you guys watching this channel know I'm a big fan of football and a big fan of murder documentaries. I've done several other previous TV Talk segments where I've gone over Netflix murder documentaries. And a big segment of my channel that watches this uh, either love football or love murder documentaries. So this checks both boxes. Uh, I just want to come out, come off really quick here and tell you guys really briefly without getting into much detail or anything. It is a very quick and easy watch. It is three episodes and each episode is like an hour long. So you'll get through the entire series in three hours. Uh, it's, it's, it's three hour long episodes that cover succinctly and quickly the 2013 murders of Odin Lloyd from uh, Aaron Hernandez. For those who don't know who Aaron Hernandez is, he was a famously, gigantically, athletic, athletically inclined tight end from the University of Florida who played with Tim Tebow and then went to the NFL to win championships for the New England Patriots. He was one of the best tight ends in football and one of the most naturally gifted tight ends that come out of college in quite some time. But he obviously had a very... Uh, psychotic kind of split personality, a lot of aggression uh, in his personality that none of us watching football or covering football ever saw from him. And this goes back and covers everything from his start. This There's so many uh, avenues this three-hour documentary, three-hour, three-episode documentary covers. Um, again, without spoiling, there's something for everyone in here. They talk about uh, the upbringing of Aaron Hernandez. They talk about his parents, his home life, where... Uh, he may or may not have gotten beaten and uh, really taken harshly by his father and uh, had to watch what he said, mentally and physically abused, potentially raped when he was a kid. Um, goes into his sexuality. Uh, several of his grade school and Wee League teammates talk about uh, Aaron possibly having uh, homosexual tendencies. They go into this um, backstory of where Aaron grew up being a really rough town and talking about his, uh, his surroundings. And how uh, back then it was not okay to be gay in that area. And so he may have hid uh, being gay by playing football and trying to be physical to compensate for the fact that he was gay and didn't want people to know he was gay. And uh, one of his uh, grade school or Pee Wee League teammates talks about their homosexual love tryst. Um, with with the, the other teammate's father there present who wasn't a fan of homosexuality either. So you got some, some awkward coming of age stuff there. Uh, they talk about Aaron Hernandez's violent temper, some of the uh, the altercations he got into at bars, the fact that he went from a small college to a big college in Florida and started getting away with everything. He was winning a national championship for an undefeated Florida team who takes their football very seriously, and so the surrounding town was giving Hernandez passes to do whatever he wanted, to sneak into bars underage. He was getting into bar fights. He wasn't paying his tabs. He was apparently very, very... Um, cognizant of, of being watched. He was always afraid that somebody was going to watch him and they tie, ba tie it back into the homosexuality. And so you see Hernandez always getting ready to fight, whether he was drunk or not, uh, always being surrounded by a very physical environment, physical friends, bad influence friends, and his temper coming out through feeling like he was going to be exposed. So it covers other potential mur murders that his friends did, uh, some of which he was found guilty for, some of which he was not. Uh, but it talks about the people he surrounded himself with. It talks about him being taken in by his, uh, I think it was his cousin, 
who was like his best friend growing up. They talk about the kind of friends the cousin had around and how there was no structure in his life once the cousin was around. They talk about how his mother, uh, after his dad passed away, his mother went and hooked up with, I believe, his uncle, which was the, the father's brother, and how there's the, all those familial kind of almost incestual kind of ties there uh, that made Hernandez very uneasy and made Hernandez want to leave home at a young age and start with his cousin and get away with too much and being surrounded by bad people at his cousin's house. And so you have a lot of nature versus nurture and a lot of psychological character breakdown of Hernandez. They play a lot of Hernandez on the phone with his mother. Sometimes they get along very sweetly and sometimes uh, the mother drives him crazy and he starts screaming at his mother about the stuff she did when he was growing up. Uh, they delve into his teammates, his father. They delve into um, some of the teammates of Florida and in the NFL that always saw his good side and didn't think he could be capable of murdering somebody. Uh, they go into Odin Lloyd's family and how the mother uh, wants vengeance but also wants forgiveness. And so there's, there's some peaceful ties to the afterlife there. And the mother dealing with the tragedy of losing her young son and trying to get over it and move on peacefully with her life while still being affected by this tragedy. Uh, there's a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about um, just the way that, uh, you know, the stuff that Hernandez's mom, the kind of guys she had around him all the time. There's talk of Aaron Hernandez's family, uh, the girlfriend that he was with, which on the outside seemed like a really good relationship, and on the inside they fought a lot, and he was aggressive a lot, and she talked about his temper and having weapons in the house and stuff like that. Uh, they show a lot of camera footage of him being in different places. They uh, show his child. Aaron Hernandez had a baby, a young child, that he seemed, uh, through the conversations, to be a very loving father. And so you see some warm, touching fatherhood conversations and Hernandez being sad about missing his daughter growing up. And then, of course, they talk about the suicide. Aaron Hernandez killed himself. Um, maybe this was in 2015, 2016. He killed himself uh, when he was found guilty forever. And they talk about the potential of if he killed himself before he was uh, convicted, uh, before the appeal goes through, that the money that the NFL took away from Hernandez when he was initially convicted and arrested would go to his daughter and she'd be set for life because he never got the full appeal. So did he kill himself to leave money for his daughter? Was it one final act of cowardice and uh, psychosis? Was it, was it his way of dealing with the end of things? and admitting his guilt, uh, or was it his way of finding a way to get money for his daughter through a a uh, kind of a, what's the word, I guess a loophole in the jail system that his daughter could be set up with money from the Patriots for life? Uh, was that one final heroic act to make up for what he'd done? So there's a lot of tragedy and triumph and getting over things and familial ties and gangster ties and just all this stuff that tie themselves into this deep character study of Aaron Hernandez being on top of the world and throwing it all away through murder and seeing how his family and friends get by without him in their lives. So again, if you like stuff like this, if you like delving into psychosis and murder mysteries and the sporting aspect of it, blaming of concussions, they discuss football and the possible CTE concussion syndrome and symptoms that football brings on and the sports aspect of it. Again, a lot of family ties, a lot of personal conversations with Hernandez, uh, and again, it's only three episodes. It's very short. So if you like a fast, easy watch, you can binge this like I did in one sitting uh, over three hours and check the whole thing out. So if you guys have seen it, tell me in the comments below what you think of A Killer Inside, The Mind of Aaron Hernandez. It is one of the best, well, first and best things that I watched in 2020 in its totality. I really enjoyed this. I'm going to give this series an 8.5 out of 10. It has some making a murderer tendencies to it. It is a much shorter, more succinct version of the making a murderer kind of thing. So if you like that, you'll like this. 8.5 out of 10. If you've seen it, tell me in the comments below what you thought. If you have not seen it and you want to go check it out, it's on Netflix right now. If you got Netflix, you can find it. And then come back and tell me in the comments what you think. And what else on Netflix, TV series and movies, what else should I watch and cover that don't get covered a lot of other places? Tell me in the comments below what else you'd like to see from my channel in the near future. And I hope to see you guys more often. See you guys soon. Take care.